We're going to discuss an interesting case. This is a 76-year-old man who was two weeks status post esophageal gastrectomy. And he had an esophageal gastric anastomosis up in his chest. Uh, the proximal stomach was resected and the stomach remnant was pedicled in the right gastric and the right gastric artery. We were called because he had a seven unit upper GI bleed in the last 24 hours. He was fairly unstable. Um, CT scan was done uh, to look at this. And one example will show you a little bit more shortly. It shows the stomach full of blood and the uh, esophageal stent in place. It did not control any bleeding. The stomach was full of blood and they did do an endoscopy and, and no visualization really was available. We'll come back and look at this. So, so and this is the operation essentially which had done all this was done partly robotically where the proximal stomach uh, was uh, resected along with the distal esophagus and the mobilized stomach uh, pulled up into the chest to create uh, the anastomosis. So anatomically essentially this is based upon the right gastric and the right gastroepiploic artery and here you can just see that the right gastroepiploic artery is one of the terminal branches of the gastroduodenal artery. We'll come back and show this in an angiogram shortly. So here's a series of the CAT scans really from top to bottom looking at this huge amount of um, uh, thrombus that was present, uh, blood clot really, and present inside the stomach, uh, including any um, visualization really from the gastric side. And the options were, could we embolize this? There were some obvious concerns about would this affect anastomotic healing. Um, uh, however, this patient was really um, in dire straits and the thoracic surgeon very reluctant to re-explore unless absolutely necessary. So basically, uh, we thought it was likely that it was bleeding from the gastroepiploic artery. Um, there was some suggestion on that basically on the CAT scan. Again, just to show the anatomy, you can see the GDA is the gastroduodenal artery, the right gastroepiploic artery uh, courses uh, between the two layers basically of the um, uh, the omentum. And normally anastomosis is with the left gastroepiploic artery, which arises from the splenic artery. However, this obviously gets divided um, when the um, short gastrics are taken down and the proximal end of the stomach is divided. So uh, that was really uh, what the target was going to be. So we'll move on to the procedure again. This patient was accessed through the groin. Um, and you can see that we accessed the celiac artery using a tour guide through this. We're using um, a five French uh, burn. Um, the wire actually went down the gastrodenal artery, as you can see here. And we advanced the catheter down into the uh, gastroepiploic artery. We weren't entirely sure how difficult this was going to be to track up into the, um, all the way up to the anastomosis, um, if, if possible at all. Um, you can see we injected this. We're actually in the right gastroepiploic artery. You can see it um, running all the way up into the, um, the along the, the distal curvature. We don't even get the top end of that artery there. So at that point, um, we switched over to using um, um, O1 wire and the Renegade microcatheter. And, and uh, this, you can see basically we're actually working through that uh, five French burn with this microcatheter, um, manipulating it um, with a combination of that wire and the microcatheter up the uh, channel of the right gastroepiploic artery. And it would kind of go in fits and starts. Um, most of the time it moved pretty freely, then sometimes it would get stuck, we'd readvance the wire, pull the catheter back, re-manipulate it, <clears throat> um, and you can see the, the catheter uh, started advancing um, up along the uh, greater curvature um, of the stomach. Mm -hmm. This is an overlay which we're bringing up that we, we shot uh, initially, it doesn't really help you that much in this particular situation. And of course, you always have the option of taking the wire back out and re-injecting uh, through this microcatheter. If you do that, you really should use um, a small syringe. Um, typically, use something like a three to five cc syringe with about 20% dye. However, once again, you can see we're actually making some progress, uh, moving up the greater curvature. <clears throat> so we still, at this point in time, haven't identified uh, the source of the bleeding. And now we're kind of reorienting. You can see there's a lot of gas in the bowel. The stomach is descended. Visualization, not that great. And essentially, we're bringing in the uh, collimators to try and even out the uh, radio density of the field. And 
think that just means we're out in some of the branches. Got to pull back and get back into the uh, main channel, which we did. There we go. Yeah, it's just a matter of making sure you're in the main artery that's the target. So pull back and puff, pull back and puff until you're actually in the artery and you get some sort of idea of the direction of the uh, right gastric employment. And there's clearly the artery. And uh, now we know what it is. And we're going to re-advance that microcatheter. <clears throat> That's the original uh, injection that we're looking at, trying to get reoriented. So I'm going to wind this forward a little bit for you. Um, so now you can see that we know where it is, and we're starting to advance the wire. So now you can see we're injecting a little bit further in. Clearly you can see where the gastroepiploic artery is coursing. Still no evidence of a blush that would confirm that this is the target. <coughs> Move forward just a little bit. Now you can see it's re-advancing the wire this time. Looks like we're right in the artery that we, we want to be in. So it's a shaped 010 wire. Following it with a microcatheter, obviously. You see the tip of the microcatheter coming up. You really just let the wire follow its own course. <clears throat> now the wire's been removed. Going to inject through the microcatheter. Looks like we're going in the right direction. You just got to keep advancing your wire and following it. And the microcatheters, we're now at least up in the chest. We're getting close. A little irregularity in it. You'll see that actually comes back into play. <clears throat> this forward a little bit more. We had trouble crossing that regularly. I'm not sure if that was something that happened at the time of surgery or something that we caused. We had trouble getting beyond that. And then we ended up basically with a little extravasation here. At that point in time, I really felt like I couldn't go much further. And we opted to go ahead and coil the gastroepiploic artery. This was based upon a suspicion of a blush based on one of the earlier films and also on the CT scan. And this is an interlock coil that we're putting in here. And I think this was a three millimeter and a five millimeter coil. That's what we put in. And the final injection will show that that artery is completely occluded. So we never really got up all the way up to the anastomosis. Um, but it's an end artery at this particular point in time. And I want to say we weren't entirely sure whether we'd fix the problem. This patient stopped bleeding immediately. And actually went on to do uh, well. Um, and never needed another blood transfusion. So I think we, we did an educated guess in terms of what we could offer this patient, and in this particular situation, it seemed to work. So it's using a combination of a tour guide, um, um, the interlock 18s, and a renegade microcatheter allowed, and you can see the order here is 
Watch the thing is occluded when we inject the dye. So just to kind of run through this one more time. You see in the early shot. We've then followed this up. And then we went ahead and embolized this. Thank you.